Hi, and welcome to the Rooster Creek Quilting Show. I'm your co-host, Linda Bertin of Linda Bertin Creations. And I'm Teresa with Rooster Creek in Holt Summit, Missouri. And we're excited here today to share with you part two of our foundation paper piecing tips. Okay, Teresa, the last time we were together, you had some really great hints about organizing and cutting your pieces. Very important to organize. Right, it makes the process so much easier. Yes. But I thought I would just share a couple of things too about the patterns. Sometimes, you know, we can get a pattern online that's a PDF mm -hmm. and we go to print it and the PDF may not come out to be the most accurate size. Yes. And so sometimes when you're printing a PDF from the web, you need to always make sure that you highlight print the actual size and not print to fit the page because that can adjust. And um, another hint that I like to tell people, especially if it's a pattern from an unknown designer, is to do a test block. Always, yes. Yep. Because you know there's two types of sewers and quilters, those who test and those who wish they tested. That's me. Okay, well that's all right. <laughs> but you know what, you have a lot of projects that you can do other things with. Oh, yes. A lot of samples. Yes. Um, you, the you other, learn. yeah, you, you learn do. From everything. And and I think as you learn, then you know how to guide others as to what not to do. I mm -hmm. think that's real important too. Now, some of us have inkjet printers, which are really user friendly when it comes to foundation paper piecing, because the ink pretty much gets absorbed. And then some of us have laser printers, and that uses a toner ink that is heat set. And so if you have a, a, a toner or a laser that you're using, a laser printer, you want to be mindful that whenever you go to press something and you're turning this over and you're pressing it, that that toner may actually transfer to your ironing board. Yes. So you may want to cover it with a small piece of muslin so that um, you don't spend all your time cleaning your studio, oh, but yes. more time creating in your studio. That's right. That's, so that's real important. The other thing um, too, uh, some people might be tempted to use the standard um, copy paper to create their patterns. Mm -hmm. And I always just say, you know, for foundation paper piecing, most of those uh, copy papers are made with recycled materials, which means they used an excessive amounts of binding agents to glue the, the recycled pieces together. So it's a little tougher in the end to remove the paper. Ah. Okay, that's why we recommend the, the foundation paper piecing paper that's more like a newsprint. It, that's what I use, yeah, it's a newsprint. It yes. has less glue, less binders, and so it easily um, comes apart. Okay, so a couple of things um, that I also like to talk about when I talk about foundation paper piecing is, number one, I like to use maybe a larger needle, like a 90 or 100 top stitch. Okay. Okay, because that also helps to perforate that paper. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I hate to fight in the end. I want the satisfaction of finishing my blocks and, and getting them in my quilt. So I don't want to fight it. Um, and the other thing that I like to do, and I don't know if they can see this or not, but one of the things that I like to do when I'm sewing um, my pattern is to extend my stitch line way beyond the, the, the suggested stitch line yeah. in the pattern. You should go at least two stitches. Okay. And that's minimum. Okay, and I always yes. say a fourth of an inch. That's and if you, good. Yes. And if you have like a purple thing, or if you can eyeball it, you can even draw on your pattern an extra um, fourth of an inch. And if mm -hmm. it happens to be this, I don't know if you can see this, but this dotted line here is my seam allowance. Right. I always tell all my students to take this stitch line all the way through to that seam allowance. What that does is it helps to hold the fabric to the pattern, and when you trim this away, there's less of a chance that it'll buckle. Right. So we're just securing it. So that's a big hint. A lot of pattern designers are these days now are including that ex those extra stitches beyond mm -hmm. the line. But if you get, you know, like I said, a newbie or someone who's not um, prolific in creating mm -hmm. foundation paper piecing, or maybe they use a computer program that doesn't add that in. Right. I just think that's a really good tip to make sure that people know to do that. Um, some other things the, um, that are helpful when it comes to starting on your first piece is that you may want to add a small dab of glue. Yes. And my recommendation is to use a washable, acid-free glue. Right, something that is just gonna hold it long enough to get that first seam stitched. Exactly, and when I talk about adding a drop of glue, it is 
a dot of glue. This is not like it's an art project that you're covering every little corner. Mm -hmm. That dot of glue then will release easier when you pull that paper out. If you do the whole spread, you're gonna have um, heartache later when it comes to removing that paper. Okay, another, um, another hint that I always tell people to do is also to look at the presser feet that they're using. If you have an open-toed presser foot or a clear presser foot, or something that has a lot of visibility so you can see the line, because when you foundation paper piece, you are just stitching right on that, that seam line. Yes. That's where you get your accuracy. Mm -hmm. So you wanna be able to see it. And as I age, I know that my eyesight is not what it used to be. That's true. And so I, I use any help that I can, even really good lighting around my sewing machine when I'm sewing, that yes. can also oh, help. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, once you get your, your pieces all together, you can trim them down so that there's only, you have your halves or your quarters or whatever it is that makes up your block. And I do have a, a hint for okay. getting this. You want the area from this line out to where you trim exactly a quarter inch. Mm -hmm. Now, as we talked about printing, mm -hmm. sometimes that may not always be a quarter inch. So if ah. you use a basic quilting ruler this is this is our add a quarter I wouldn't mm -hmm. use this for trimming but you lay your quarter inch mark on the solid line and then you would cut mm -hmm. outside of it that way even if when you cut it's inside or outside of this dotted line which is the suggested cutting line right you're gonna have it exactly one quarter so, so if there was any kind of a distortion in the printing? Yes. See, you would just cut it right on that quarter. You would let the, the ruler, and like I said, I would use a regular quilting ruler like you use to cut out your pieces, not that has the, add a quarter. Okay, that has the quarter of an inch mark on it right, is what you're talking right. about, the flat one. And that will give you, and I don't know if you can see where, where my, my cutter just ran, but it's right outside of, of that dotted line. Inch. And that gives you a perfect quarter inch so when you get ready to sew them together that this dark line is going to naturally want to line up and it, there won't be any cut off points or tips exactly exactly so it's a good tip and you know um, the other thing we should probably mention is scanners and printers sometimes do distort yes because you know there are counterfeiters out there and you can't have people counterfeiting money so they do distort slightly it's 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 something that you have to work with now some another tip that I wanted to share with you is when you get ready to, to piece your units together to look for registration lines that you're going to be pinning with so when I look at this block this is definitely a match point or something that I want to make sure that we're going to have um, a good a good connection so I would take one pin and insert it here because that's where it should be matching mm -hmm. and I'm going to come on the other side and oh look at that that's not too bad okay and poke it through and then I'm going to because there was only that one match point on this block I am going to go ahead and do the actual tip of the block and the tip here. And notice that I'm leaving these perpendicular. This is real important. Um, I yes, think I think a lot of people don't realize this because our tendency is to, to take this and then twist it yes. and that distorts. Mm -hmm. But if you leave your pins in perpendicular and then come back come back here with a second a second pin. Yes. You're holding your position and then all you're going to do is connect. Um, yes. And then there's no distortion, and never ever sew over a pin, because yeah. that can take the timing out of your machine. I mean, go ahead it if you love to pay, take them into the spa, but yeah. It makes the machine really sad. And if you can see when she did that, see if you would have followed just this solid line instead of putting your pin where the point is, Look how much different this bottom paper is compared to the top paper. Tremor error. So well, <laughs> no, yes, it is. but that the, yeah. the tip I had about the quarter inch. Right. That takes all that. That away. takes it away. That's or at right. least it gives us a better chance. <laughs> okay. Now my my second hint when it comes to sewing units together mm -hmm. is I like to go ahead at this time. Now normally when we sew on 
on our stitch lines or on our seam lines, we are short sewing at a shorter stitch to yes. help perforate. But now I take this up to a basting stitch and I'm just going to sew and pull out those pins as I come to them all the way down connecting this unit. Then when I'm finished, I open this up and make sure my points, my matching points uh -huh. have matched. And then if it is, the pins are all gone. I just put this back underneath my sewing machine with a, sh a shorter stitch length and then it becomes a unit. Very good. It's a lot easier to pull out those long basting stitches it sure is. than it is to pull out the tight ones. Yeah, if you're not sure, a rip ear takes a lot more strength than just stitching a piece of uh, a binding stitch in, yes. Yes. Okay, so something else that I get asked quite a bit is when do I take the paper off, off my pattern? Well, believe it or not, <laughs> you wait until the end. Yes. I wait until I sew my other surrounding um, fabrics all the way around. So like on this block, this center block here was paper pieced. Once I had my border or my setting block um, sewn in it, then I went in and pulled out my paper. Mm -hmm. Now if you're having trouble with, um, let's say, your center getting bulky and you can't press it tight, you can go in and slightly remove little bits of the paper mm -hmm. in the center to help it press flat. But don't take anything off the edges until you actually stabilize it. Because sometimes when we're doing this flipping technique of sewing foundation paper piecing, yes. we can get it on a bias. Yes. And a bias is a bad thing because there's the most stretch in yes. a bias. And so what this does, the beauty of the foundation paper piecing is it, it holds and stabilizes our pieces together. And we don't want to lose that before we get that stabilized with another on grain like this one had the um, actual border sewn to it. Mm -hmm. So you can't get these fabrics going in these directions by piecing them because of that bias. That's right. This it is a luxury and so we don't want to take the paper out and ruin that before we get it together. Right. We don't want to we don't want to have no, how do I say it? we don't want to ruin the party before we get the fun, right? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think that is all I had that I was really excited to share with um, our listeners today. Do you have anything else that you want to suggest? No, except that if you haven't tried paper piecing, do. Uh, don't be afraid of it. And I mean, what's it going to hurt? You might have to buy more fabric. That would be really, really <laughs> difficult. Well, that was a really great program. Just jam-packed full of hints and tips. Yes, I learned a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, this is the place to be. This is Rooster Creek Quilting, where the quilting is always fun. And if it's not fun, why do it? That is so true. And remember to like and subscribe to our channel here so that you can keep up with our latest videos, hints, tips, and other fun features we might offer. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to su subscribe. We'll see you later. Rooster Creek Quilting in Holt Summit, Missouri is your one-stop shop for all your quilting needs and more. Their specialties include great customer rapport to assist you with finding that perfect fabric, notion, pattern, pre-cuts, and embroidery supplies. Rooster Creek also offers professional long-arm quilting services and classes and much more. Don't wait for the rooster to crow. Visit Rooster Creek Quilting at Holt Summit Plaza, Holt Summit, Missouri. It's a great place to go for all of your quilting needs.